What's up everybody? Welcome back to Exotic Astrology again and we will continue with our Bhagavad Gita series today and we discuss till the 15th verse where Krishna, Arjuna and Bhima blow, blows their respective conscious. Bhima's conscious is Pondra, Krishna's conscious is Panchajanya and Arjuna's conscious is did somebody do some homework? No. <laughs> Devadatta is Arjuna's conscience. Now we will continue with the 16th verse. And here, before beginning, as I do the prayer, Omagyan Timirandhasya Gyanan Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Meli Tamyena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha. Alright. So here, 16, 17, 18, all three verses are described together. So I will read it at a stretch. So here what is happening basically, <coughs> different personalities from the side of the Pandavas are blowing the consuls. <coughs> so we will see who is blowing and what is the name of the consul. Anant Vijayam Raja Kunti Putro Yudhishthira Did you understand? Nakula Sahdevascha Sughosha Mani Pushpako Kashyascha Parameshwasa Shikhandicha Maharatha Drupado Dropadeyascha Sarvascha Prithvipate Sobhadrascha Mahabahu Sobhadrascha, who is he? The son of Subhadra, Abhimanyu Shankham Dadmo Prithak Prithak How beautiful it is. So the translation is as follows. King Yudhishthira, the son of Kunti, blew his conchal, the Anant Vijay, that is his conchal. And Nakul and Sedev blew the Sughosh and Manipushpak. So there, Nakul's conchal is Sughosh. Sahadev has the conchal named as Manipushpak. How beautiful the names are, right? That great archer, the, the king of Kashi, the great fighter, Shikhandi, Drishtadyumna, Virat, the unconquerable Satyaki, Dropada, sorry, Drupada, the sons of Draupadi. Draupad is Draupadi's father, and then Draupadeyascha is Draupadi's sons, because Draupadi had her father and all the sons in the Kurukshetra. So her father, and then her sons, and the others, O king. Such as the mighty armed son of Subhadra, Abhimanyu, all blew their respective consuls. So when you see O King, it means Sanjay is telling to Dhritarashtra. Now the purport is as follows. Sanjay informed King Dhritarashtra very tactfully that his unwise policy of deceiving the sons of Pandu and endeavoring to enthrone his own sons on the seat of the kingdom was not very laudable. So Sanjay is indirectly telling him, you did a big blunder, you have to suffer now. <laughs> the signs already clearly indicated that the whole Kuru dynasty would be killed in that great battle. Beautiful it is. All of them will be slaughtered because of their sinful actions. Beginning with the grandsire Bhishma down to the grandsons like Abhimanyu and others including kings from many states of the world all were present there and all were doomed. See that's the sad part of the story that even Abhimanyu died and Draupadi's five sons they were also killed mercilessly. <coughs> Only the Pandavas remained and Lord Krishna remained nobody survived among the prominent warriors. The whole catastrophe was due to King Dhritarashtra because he encouraged the policy followed by his sons. Who were his sons? His evil sons, especially headed by Duryodhana, Dushasana and Vikarna and so many others. Hundred sons he had, my God. So therefore, that's the sad part of the story. That Even though there were people on the side of righteousness, even they were going to perish. Because to counter evil, some level of goodness have to be sacrificed. Otherwise, evil cannot be countered. 
there you see there's the problem here it's a big problem even though you may be good but you will still be slaughtered because of other people there you go how dangerous it is never do bad things now we have text number 19 saghosho dhratrashtranam hridayani vyadhrat nabhascha prithvim chaiva tumulo bhyanudaya the blowing of these different consuls became very uproarious vibrating both in the sky and on the earth it shattered the hearts of the sons of dhritarashtra it shattered the hearts when bhishma and the others on the side of duryodhana blew their respective consul there was no heart breaking on the part of the pandavas so it's written that when the pandavas sun is rising when the pandavas heard bhishma and other people on the side of the kurus blowing their consuls they were not fearful it didn't uh, shake their confidence but when the people on the side of the pandavas especially yudhishthir arjun nakul sahadev and krishna all of these personalities they blew their consuls there was uh, the, the hearts of the kurus duryodhana and others were shattered because they always knew that they are on the side of evil and they will be punished by god they always knew it internally but they were like the ostrich who always thought no 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 nothing will happen everything is fine everything is great but that doesn't happen in reality you see such occurrences are not mentioned such occurrences means that the pandavas were feeling oh my god what will happen they are blowing their consuls no such occurrence is mentioned but in this particular verse it is mentioned that the hearts of the sons of dhritarashtra were shattered by the sounds vibrated by the pandavas party <laughs> this is due to the pandavas and their confidence in lord krishna there you go this is the defining principle krishna was there on their side so they were confident that victory will be ours one who takes shelter of the supreme lord has nothing to fear even in the midst of the greatest calamity see what it's written one who takes shelter of the supreme lord has nothing to fear even in the midst of greatest calamity they were completely fearless that krishna is there on our side nobody can defeat us even if personalities like bhishma and drona are there on that side but krishna is krishna he is god ultimately now we will read the text number 20 अथा व्यस्थित दृष्टि धरात्राष्ट्रन कपी ध्वज प्रवृत्ते शास्त्रे संपते धनुर्द्यमु पांडवा धनुर्द्यमु पांडवा हु इज अर्जुन ऋषिकेश तद वाक्यम इदम अहा महीपते ट्रांसलेशन इज एट द टाइम अर्जुन द सन ऑफ पांडु सीटेड इन दी चैरियट बियरिंग दी फ्लैग मार्क विद हनुमा i have discussed about hanuman ji in the last uh, video of bhima's glory so if you do not know how hanuman ji is sitting here then please go and uh, watch that the previous video from this bhima's glories at that time arjuna the son of pandu seated in the chariot bearing the flag marked with hanuman took up his bow and prepared to shoot his arrows he is ready and his bow was named as what was the name of his bow gandiva who was gifted uh, which was gifted to him by the great agni the god of fire o king after looking at the sons of dhritarashtra drawn in military ar- array arjuna then spoke to lord krishna these words the purport the battle was just about to begin it is understood from the above statement that the sons of dhritarashtra were more or less disheartened <laughs> by the unexpected arrangement of military force by the pandavas who were guided by the direct di- direct instructions of lord krishna on the battlefield so it seems that the pandavas were not expecting uh, so sorry the kauravas were not expecting that they will have such a great military formation maybe they were expecting oh anyways they only have seven akshohinis we have 11 we will just slaughter them but it seems they were disheartened by seeing the arrangement of the pandavas 
and this was because they were guided by the direct instructions of Lord Krishna on the battlefield. So Krishna is the deciding factor. He is the one who is the reason of Pandava's victory. The emblem of Hanuman on the flag of Arjuna is another sign of victory because Hanuman cooperated with Lord Ram in the battle between Ram and Ravan and Lord Ram emerged victorious about which I have discussed in the earlier video. Please go and watch that. So Hanumanji and Ram were together in the battle of Ramayan in Lanka and they emerged victorious. So that's what is written here that because of this there is no iota of doubt that in this battle also Arjuna is going to be victorious. Now both Ram and Hanuman were present on the chariot of Arjuna to help him. Who is Ram? Ram is Krishna himself and Hanumanji is present in the flag. Lord, Ra Lord Krishna is Ram himself and wherever Lord Ram is, his eternal servitor Hanuman and his eternal consort Sita, the goddess of fortune are present. So Lakshmi Devi and Hanuman is always there wherever Lord Vishnu is. And Vishnu is only Ram and Ram is only Krishna. Krishna is only Ram. Therefore, Arjuna had no cause to fear any enemies whatsoever. So Arjuna was fearless. Nobody could challenge him, defeat him. And above all, the Lord of the senses, Lord Krishna, was personally present to give him direction. So, Krishna would never let his mind go haywire, waver here, there. <laughs> Thus, all good counsel was available to Arjuna in the matter of executing the battle. In such auspicious conditions arranged by the Lord for his eternal devotee, lay the signs of assured victory. That means it writ it's written here that the victory was almost guaranteed because these symptoms were manifesting. For example, Hanumanji's presence, Krishna's personal presence there. And then because of all this, the hearts of the Kauravas, they were shattered to pieces. And they thought maybe our time has now come to die because they always knew this internally. But because of the fake prowess, the fake size of the army. When I say fake, I don't mean it, did, it didn't exist. Fake means even if they had 11 Akshohinis, but Krishna was not on their side. So Krishna alone is more than millions and trillions and billions of Akshohinis because he is God himself. So it doesn't matter how many Akshohinis are there on the side of the Pandavas. Even though it is 7 and even though they, the enemies, the Kurus had 11. But defeat for the Kurus is certain. That is what is mentioned that by the symptoms when the conscious were blown, their hearts were blown and Hanumanji's presence including Krishna's personal association. That is it from my side. Tomorrow we will continue with Arjuna started with his speaking to Krishna that please take my chariot towards the middle portion of the army. Alright, that is it from my side. If you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want me to make any other video on the Gita or something else, then please let me know in the comments. And anyways, I am going to read the whole Gita. Maybe within one and a half to two years, I'll finish it. Okay. If you like this video, click the thumbs up and share it with your family, friends and loved ones. Okay. That is it from my side. Until next time, wish you good luck. Bye bye. See you.